Welcome back to JRE Unleashed. Today we have Joe Rogan and Paul Rosalie talking about anacondas, particularly their size and the folklore surrounding them. The first recorded sightings of giant anacondas were from the time of the discovery of South America, when early European explorers entered the dense jungles there and claimed to have seen giant snakes measuring up to 60 feet. They also discuss how green anacondas are the largest snakes in the world, and their feeding habits in the Amazon are truly remarkable. These apex predators are opportunistic feeders, meaning they will eat whatever prey is available, but they have a particular fondness for large mammals, such as capybaras, deer, and caimans. One of the most interesting aspects of feeding behavior is their strategy of targeting places with mineral licks. These are natural deposits of minerals that are essential for the health of many animals. Anacondas are also known for their ability to eat prey that is larger than themselves. This is possible because of their unique jaw structure. Let's get right into the interview with Joe Rogan and Paul Rosalie. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. We'll add a small amount of commentary to elaborate on some points made in the conversation, but we'll save the majority of it for the end of the video. Let's dive right in. What is the folklore? Like, what do they say when they say what's the biggest one? Uh, I mean, I have people that told me that they found a 60-foot anaconda. <gasps> they're, they're, that guy's a drunk. Um, that yeah, I think maybe he's on. telling the truth. Ah, picture didn't happen. Remember the movie with Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that there was one. <laughs> John Voight. John Voight had like the worst Brazilian accent ever. It didn't even sound Brazilian. I gotta it's actually so watch strange. that movie. Was, I really feel like I should. It's a terrible movie. Is it? Is it? Oh, it's terrible. But it's great. Yeah. It's like yeah. one of those. I think it was like There's nothing wrong with a good bad movie. I want to say it was like '90s, oh, right? Oh shit! What year was that? It's a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but the look, actual big anaconda look at the size of it the one that's come yeah, behind yeah. ice cube the actual big uh, anaconda was i think it was that like, i've yeah. seen that image before yeah John Boyd. <laughs> you should hear his brazilian accent too oh, it's no. it's crazy it doesn't sound it doesn't even make sense wait does he eat two people at once <laughs> yeah bro oh shit it's a movie wow one person is not scary enough <laughs> gotta be tied together <laughs> somehow Could eat you and your family <laughs> Tied together somehow, and the oh, snake shit. wraps. So they they say they've seen a sixty foot one, but sure. th do they have an age limit? Like, do they? It seems like when they get to a certain size, nothing's hunting them. No, they're so an apex predator. Disease or a old age? They no. Get so in the Amazon, the cool thing with the Amazon is it's the greatest natural baddest battlefield on earth. It's literally mm. just this t churning death march. I, like life is like a momentary stasis in this like recycling of death, and it's like. You fight for it. And so and a snake that's getting big like that one that we just caught, like Eleanor, it's like, so we learned that she moves around this swamp and has a home range. And then eventually after a few months, you know, she passes the transmitter. She'll poop out the transmitter. Um, but one of the guys on the team, Pat, is actually, I think, through Acadia University. We've, we've, we've been continuing this and we've learned that there are so many more anacondas than we thought. And everyone said the traditional literature said that they're ambush predators, that they only wait. And it's like, no, they're going to places where there's mineral licks in the Amazon and they stake out them. Like they're more strategic than we thought. Oh, so they wait for the animals to lick the minerals. Yeah. So there's places where there's like a salt deposit. And so you'll right. get all the herbivores coming there for the salt. And so, but the anacondas will go up streams and strategically target those places. <sighs> and so I've, at one time we saw an anaconda eating a peccary, which is for everybody that doesn't know, is a wild boar. Like a javelina. Yeah. And like I, I was at a stream trying to take a picture of a butterfly and I heard this and I looked down and there's like a 16 foot anaconda and it just bent this peccary in half and it was just looking at me and it was like, and then it split. And so once a snake leaves its meal, it's very unfortunate, but once a snake leaves its meal, it's not going to come back to it. So the snake left because we had gotten, unknowingly we got too close. So we, we had wild boar that night. <laughs> we just threw it on the barbecue. Like. Joe discusses the lifespan of anacondas and how it will grow to maturity at a rapid pace. It'll be considered an adult by the time it's three or four years old. If it lives in the wild, it will typically live for about 10 years. However, if they are raised in captivity, have a number of advantages. With proper care and medical treatment, they can live to be about 30 years old. They typically prefer semi-aquatic environments. These habitats include marshes, swamps, and even streams if the flow of water is slow enough. In fact, their nickname of water boa even alludes to their love of semi-aquatic habitats. Some of the countries where we find anaconda include Colombia, 
Peru, Brazil, and Trinidad. They can even be found as far south as the northern part of Paraguay. Wow. Oh, speaking of eating things, Jamie, could you, there's a, I think it's just called monkey head. I've been dying to show you this. I, I Can I like, ask you a question though? Yeah. How old did they get? Like the one that you got that was 18 feet, how old do you think she was? The thing is they have indeterminate growth. So you take a baby anaconda, they're live born by the way, not in eggs. And so you get, you get a brand new slimy little anaconda and they come out um, and their food for like the jabby roo storks, for other caiman, for even fish. Um, the fish are brutal, man. I just, I caught a baby caiman the other day. Um, he had no toes because the piranhas were eating his toes off. Whoa. Um, but the anaconda is interesting because it's, it has this outsized impact on the whole ecosystem because they start off basically as prey. They're just, you know, these little two foot worms. But then as they grow, then all of a sudden they can eat bigger things. Then they can eat the caiman back. Then they can start eating the birds. And then all of a sudden they're eating capybara. And then you get to the big mamas where they're the top of the ecosystem. They're the top of the food chain. And so you have like black caiman, anaconda, jaguar, harpy, eagle, giant rib rockers. And like those are your like, you know, top contenders for apex predator in the Amazon. The harpy eagle's amazing. <sighs> what a wild looking creature. Oh, they're, they're talons. They're so big too. Is that, is that the biggest eagle? I don't, I don't think it's the, I think the, I think the Philippine eagle or, or the stellar sea eagle, but the harpy is just unreasonably large like when you see them you go that that's that's what that is and they eat a lot of monkeys they eat a lot of monkeys and so one of the ways to tell when there's a harpy eagle around is like we'll be walking through the jungle and you just find a pile of bones because up in that nest 150 feet up they're just dropping monkeys and sloths and the babies are ripping them apart and then they just chuck the bones out so you'll see like a little <laughs> bone yard in the jungle wow yeah it doesn't last too long because nothing lasts long it just keeps recycling everything but um, when I was a kid, you know, in the rainforest books, they'd say 50% of the life in a rainforest is up in the canopy. And it's like, you always say like, yeah, bullshit. It is. There's more stuff up there than there is down there. So when you're walking in the Amazon, you're under 150 feet of green. 3% of the sunlight is hitting the ground. Most of the action is happening above you. Wow. The birds, the monkeys, the bats, the snakes, the frogs, everything is moving up there. There's cactuses and bromeliads and vines, and it's all interconnected, and there's this whole network. The Amazon canopy keeps changing the, the like, when you say how many species are on Earth, and it's like, they're like, we really don't know. Paul, in the end, shows his enthusiasm with the wildlife in Amazon and the sheer diversity available in the vast jungles. The Amazon rainforest boggles the mind with its sheer immensity and extraordinary biodiversity. The estimated land area of 2.1 million square miles covers around 40% of South America and part of nine countries, including Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia. Approximately 30% of the world's known species can be found within this enormous and dense region, with new ones being constantly discovered. Unfortunately, deforestation and other habitat destruction have also led to mass extinctions, and threaten the existence of many more unique and important species. The current model shows that the Amazon rainforest is home to 427 mammal species, 1,300 birds, 378 reptiles, and more than 400 species of amphibians. The Amazon is an incredibly unique place. It is the world's largest rainforest and river system, and the most biologically diverse place on Earth. It contains millions of species, most of them still undescribed. Both the Amazon's forest and freshwater systems are at risk. Since the year 2000, rainfall has declined across 69% of the Amazon forest. WWF estimates that 27% of the Amazon biome will be without trees by 2030 if the current rate of deforestation continues. Protecting and conserving the Amazon is no easy task, but WWF has been working to save this important place. The Amazon contains 1.4 billion acres of dense forests, half of the planet's remaining tropical forests, 4,100 miles of winding rivers, and 2.6 million square miles in the Amazon basin, home to more than a thousand different species of birds like hummingbirds. Amazon is one of the most diverse areas for birds in the world. Macaws, an icon of the Amazon, are highly intelligent and social, living in flocks of 10 to 30 birds. They mate for life and can live up to 60 years. Some species can even mimic human speech but macaws are under threat from deforestation and the illegal pet trade. More than 30 million people, including 350 indigenous and ethnic groups, live in the Amazon and depend on nature for agriculture, clothing, and traditional medicines. There is also a clear link between the health of the Amazon and the health of the planet. The rainforests, 
which contain 90 billion to 140 billion metric tons of carbon, help stabilize local and global climate. The Amazon also pumps about 7 trillion tons of water per year into the atmosphere, and its forests recycle 50% of annual rainfall back into the atmosphere. Make sure to check out the full episode with Joe Rogan and Paul Rosalie by heading over to Spotify. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to be updated on all our future content. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.